After the ladies' mission trip to Mongolia, I, uh, I fell ill somehow. And uh, in Mongolia, the weather was pretty cold, pretty cool, and there was no uh, heating system in the house. So, uh, yes, and I got recovered a little bit more. So, uh, and, uh, so in the continuation of that report last Sabbath, I'd love to share with you more about the mission trip. And the uh, Mongolian SDA elementary school in there, there are so many students, and they love to learn the Korean cultures and some games, and uh, they love them. They love to learn and join with the, the games, and we taught them some of the Korean traditional games. We played them together, and we uh, taught them the Korean language. And uh, also, we had uh, uh, we had uh, teachers and staff members joined the seminar, and I shared the messages. And uh, those teachers and uh, those ministers there trying their best to spread the gospel, but in Mongolia, it is, it is really banned to teach about Jesus or God or Bible. So uh, they are trying their best to find a way to spread the gospel without saying Jesus, without the saying the word Jesus or God. And we had a translator, Mongolian translator too. And it was not easy for us to spread gospel. Uh, with their own languages. So uh, that's why we had a translator and they, they asked us to give them some some of them some of the materials and the messages uh, that we have we are spreading now here and we are uh, a little bit cautious to give them uh, the materials that we have because it might be used in a wrong way. So uh, we are a little bit cautious now. And uh, we also show them how to bake and cook and uh, in the New Start way. So New Start diet and Korean food, we show them how to make it. Their staple food is uh, milk and also the, uh, the lamb. So they are consuming meat and uh, milk. Uh, those things are their staple food. So I, we went there and showed them how to cook and how to make food. Uh, without losing any nutrition uh, with the vegetables only. So I saw one of the young people there and he said he is really good at doing the dishes too. And uh, Sister Heidi uh, volunteered herself to teach those uh, uh, New Start diet. And uh, she did a huge part too. And then a Mongolian traditional house, Ged, which refers to uh, as Pao in Chinese, and uh, small cabins with pointy roof along the hillside. And maybe we couldn't actually and know how the weather was like in the in Mongolia. So, uh, you know, our sister in the middle, uh, she is wearing short sleeves, but uh, other people are wearing uh, big garments. 
And also we went to, we observed the stars in the night sky. Since the sky was so clear, and uh, in the winter time, the temperature drops below uh, minus 40 degrees Celsius. So uh, in the winter time, they, there, are, there is no activity much. And before we went to Mongolia to spread gospel, we heard uh, we heard uh, a bad news about spreading gospel there. So uh, we heard that the people, the Mongolian people there, uh, their minds are a little stubborn uh, to accept the gospel. So uh, we prepare, uh, we actually divide our uh, mission trip a team into several different groups and we gave them their own missions uh, and we try our best to pr pray before the Lord everywhere uh, we pray so much Every, everywhere we went we always prayed and the sincere prayers were everywhere and we also gave them a Q&A session they asked us so many questions about how to how to be a Christian in our daily life and uh not even one person uh, missed uh, the entire meetings. And then uh, And uh, I found that I found out that most of the pastors, Mongolian pastors, there uh, they can play the guitar well and they sing well. So I wonder how. But anyway, and uh, Mongolian language sounds a bit hard for us to pronounce. So they have their own unique ways to uh, uh, pronounce other languages too. The, the pastor of the Mongolian mission, the head pastor of the Mongolian mission, and our pastor Lee Yong Ho went there with us. And then he was an MC there. He le he led the entire uh, seminar. <laughs> and uh, Sister Heidi also led some parts of the seminar too. And we had uh, several translators working for us throughout the seminar. These are the people who gave uh, who gave testimonies before the Mongolian people. And uh, our deaconesses, deaconess Wu also gave testimonies and their experience of being healed by the love of Jesus Christ. And uh, every, everywhere I went, I got questions and uh, I gave them answers. And uh, I saw so surprisingly uh, that they were uh, being healed uh, by the power of the gospel. Uh, I took a photo with uh, the secretary of the uh, Mongolian mission uh, president and uh, the translator too. And we had uh, some of the outdoor activities like uh, playing 
volleyball, and then uh, ping pong. So uh, the weather is, was pretty cold. So we could bear the cold weather only by doing some outdoor activities and warmed ourselves. All over the place was just uh, grazing pastures. There were no, uh, we could not see trees much. We could not see many trees there because maybe they, didn't, they don't have any uh, techniques yet. So uh, any one of you knows how to grow trees there, please contact us. So we spent a week there to spread gospel, two days of the seminar in the SDA school, and five days of seminar for the Mongolian mission. And this is the one of the pastor's wife. They have heard the wrong new start, wrong way to uh, be healed. As she heard the true new start way of healing, that she felt a little hasty to spread this gospel, the truth to uh, her acquaintances. And when she realized that there is a way to be healed, and the true healer is Jesus Christ in our hearts. So our hearts must be healed first. And their, their ways of disciplining uh, children is just heeding them and beating them. And this is one of the pastor's wives too. I didn't know the principle and the way uh, to the true knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, but when they found out, when they realized that truth and the gospel, they their hearts became so hot and warmed, and they want to share this gospel to other people. So in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, without any sin, they lived the life that God wanted them to live. But they they sinned, they disobey disobeyed God, and they were actually uh, casted out of the Eden. And now God showed them the way uh, to come back to him. And the book of Revelation chapter 20 and verse 27, but there shall no, uh, there shall by no means enter it anything uh, that defiles or causes an ab abomination uh, or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. We cannot bring anything, abomination or a lie, sinful things to heaven. But 
through Jesus Christ we can enter heaven. And people are shouting out loud, when you believe you can go to heaven on, out on the street, that kind of gospel cannot save us, save anyone. But only the experience, this practical knowledge that we experience in our life through Jesus Christ's love and grace, by only, only that thing, that truth, we can enter heaven. This is what the transgressors of God's law have done ever since the day of Adam and Eve's disobedience. They have sought to gather fig, fig leaves to cover the nakedness caused by transgression. They have worn the garments of their own devising by works of their own. They have tried to cover their sins and make themselves acceptable with God. We cannot actually be saved by our own doings or our own actions or our own righteousness. No, we don't have any righteous, righteousness anyway. Only by Jesus Christ we can enter heaven. In the book of Matthew chapter 22, there was one king, one ruler, and the ruler's son was about to get married. And on the wedding day, the king actually observed the visitors, the guests, and checked their garments, the garments of righteousness. So only who wear the right garment can enter that banquet. And what is that garment? The book of Matthew chapter 22, verse 12, it says, So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. So this is the topic. This is the first topic of this uh, king's banquet, this parable. How sinful we are. How sinful we are. We are so much sinful. We don't have a hope, maybe. But Jesus, by His own blood that was shed on the cross, He makes us wear the garments of righteousness. Only by wearing His righteousness we can be accepted to heaven and by God. By the marriages, uh, by the marriage is represented the union of humanity with divinity. The wedding garment represents the character which all must possess who shall be accounted fit guests for the wedding. It means that we, does it mean that we can change our own character? Well, no, it's not. It doesn't mean that. It means that by, by the power of the love and the power of the grace and power of the blood of Jesus Christ, we will be changed. So when we follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ day by day, then the place will, uh, that we, we will reach is heaven. And the most important thing that we have to know is that we have a convic conviction in Jesus Christ. So this is the gospel that we have to spread all around the world to other people who do not know Jesus. A lot of people cannot, they don't experience this now. They don't experience Jesus in their life. So that's why we have to spread gospel. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23, Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hatches and compel them to come in, that many ha my house may be filled. There is, there is, a, there is a strong need for us to go out there and spread gospel to America, to Mongolia, and to so many other countries. By, the, by having the experience of seeing Jesus, meeting Jesus in our past, we are here now and worshiping God and listening to His words and being so happy with Jesus Christ now. But 
this happiness doesn't last long unless we spread gospel to other people who really need it, desperately need Jesus. So the Mongolian sister who just gave testimonies in every moment, in every event in her life, she called out the name of Jesus and tried to follow his footsteps. But he, more and more, she does that. And she actually feels uh, God's presence in her life. That's what she told us, right? So in every moment, every event in our lives, we have to call out, call out the name of Jesus and ask help from him. Book of Revelation chapter 19, verse 8. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. This linen is made, made of the thin threads. And thin threads means every event, every action, every thought, every, every things that we do, everything that we do in our life. So everything, one by one, in our life, we have to follow Jesus, and that makes this fine linen. And this is called the righteousness by faith. And one of the Mongolian pastors there asked us, we are good in playing the guitar and singing too. But why can't we spread gospel with our singings, our praising, our skills in musical talent? But the best way to spread gospel to other people who don't know God and Jesus is through spreading the message of health, new start. We can sing, of course. We can play the guitar. We can play the piano. By music, we can also spread gospel to other people too. But spreading this truth about health is making sure of them believing Jesus more in their life.
одоо би аягүй их нэг мэстэ байгаа ч гэсэн аягүй баяр хөөртэй яг тэгвэл би энэ зүйлийг би өөрөө бодоогүй байна сатаа бодолж ээ сатаа намаа ялхыг өөрөө тод оруулахыг хүсэж ээ гэдгийг ойлгосон өнөөдөр эсэсийг өдөрчин болгоно네, 용서의 경험을 못했어요. 그 생각이 Before that moment, she had never experienced true forgiveness. She was struggled with guiltiness. But now she's eager to spread gospel. God has allowed us to experience the truth. And we are so much blessed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we don't know the truth, when we don't experience the true gospel in our lives, we are all struggling. This robe woven in the loom of heaven has in it not one thread of human devising. Christ in his humanity wrought out the perfect character, and this character he offers to impart to us. So individually in their families, they have to actually fight this war against Satan, but they don't know who to fight. So that's why they beat up their children. They nag their husbands and wives. And one of the pastors there, he expressed, he experienced. <laughs> Was being a Christian in their families is so much so powerful and effective. But there's, it is worthless for them to beat up their children and fight with their, their spouses and just go up there and preach gospel. It's useless. And one, one of the pastor's wives uh, said this. So being a role model to their children is really important. To our children is really important. So we have to we have to be changed first. 
before anyone else changes. So vineyard have a lot of vine trees. And for a vine tree to bear good fruits, the branch should be grafted to a good tree. To bear a good vine, good grapes. We have to be grafted to Jesus Christ, right? To bear a good grapes. The branch should be grafted to a good tree. So first to bear a good fruit in our character, we have to be grafted to Jesus Christ, the principal and the best character. But without this grafting, we we have been trying our best to be changed for ourselves by our own doings. We have to wear a new garment which, that is Jesus Christ. When we, uh, when we submit ourselves to Christ, the heart is united with His heart. The will is merged in His will. The mind becomes one with His mind and thoughts are brought into captivity to Him and we live His life. And this is what it means to be clothed with the garment of His righteousness. So, what do we have to practice? We have to practice to call upon the name of Jesus and also give up ourselves. Then, Jesus will be the one who make us stand. Only the covering which Christ Himself has provided can make us meet to appear in God's presence this co covering, the robe of His own righteousness, Christ will put upon every repenting, believing soul. I counsel thee, He says, to buy of me white raiment, and that thou mayest be clothed. So, the Bible is talking about not wearing the garment of Jesus Christ is to be naked. Uh, this is a photo of me and one of my Mongolian one of the Mongolian ministers who joined the seminar. And there I could not, I could not actually communi communicate with him well because I cannot speak Mongolian and he cannot speak Korean too. So we had to have a translator. And this pastors this pastor actually told me that she thought he saw that he thought that his life was righteous. righteous. He actually lived a uh, righteous life, but uh, he actually found out he, he has not. Yeah. Live for Jesus and die for Jesus.
So we have to spread the three angels' messages to other people around the world. And what is the point of this three angels' message, this everlasting message? It is to change their character. The only way for us to get to heaven is to wear this new garment. So the three angels' message is to spread gospel. And the gospel means to make them change their own character. I mean, by the grace and love of Jesus Christ, of course. So the message of Christ's soon coming is designed to arouse man from their absorption in worldly things. It is intended to awaken them to a sense of eternal realities. Then they may give heed to the invitation uh, to the Lord's table. So in every age, there has been only one message. The, the Abraham's era or Jacob or Moses. All the gospel throughout the Bible and the history of the Bible is the same. This is everlasting gospel. Abraham, as a forefather of faith, he received a promise from God. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In everyday events of our life, we face difficulties and we face those hardships. And every time we face those kind of things, we have to call upon the name of Jesus. And whenever we do that, I surely believe that Jesus will give us the way to change. So if we spread this gospel, this practical knowledge of Jesus Christ to other people, then we'll be blessed. And the, the gospel that Abraham spread is the same gospel that we are spreading, and we have to spread. Abraham, their father, to whom the covenant promise was first given, had been called to go forth from his kindred to the regions beyond, that he might be a light bearer to the heathen, although the promise to him included a posterity as numerous as the sand by the sea. Yet it was for no selfish purpose that he was uh, to become the founder of the great nation in the land of Canaan. God's covenant with him embraced all the nations of the earth. I have hope in this church because every part of the Saranam Church, every member is fighting their own fight against Satan by calling upon the name of Jesus in their lives. Just like God promised to Abraham, God blessed Abraham. God is now trying his best to give us all the blessings that we have, uh, he can give us. So if we try our best to spread gospel following the footsteps of Jesus Christ, he will give us the blessing as well as the gospel to spread. The remnant do not present a different gospel. In view of the judgment, they reaffirm that, that everlasting gospel that sinners can be justified by faith and receive Christ's righteousness. The remnant, we call ourselves as a remnant. The remnant, by, as a remnant, we have to spread this promise, the same gospel that God actually bestowed upon Abraham. Today, as never before, the disse dissemination of Bible truth by means of the consecrated church is bringing to the sons of men the benefits foreshadowed centuries ago in the promise to Abraham and to all Israel, to God's church on earth in every age. I will bless thee, and thou shalt be a blessing. Amen. Three angels' message. Is the same message that God gave to Abraham. 
and it is viable and powerful to all nations and all human beings. There is but one gospel to save men. It will continue as long as there are men to be saved. There never will be another gospel. Amen. So we have to spread this one gospel to other people around the world. The book of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Amen. God goes beyond the nations and people before us. God goes before us. So there we shall not, we shall not be afraid. So as I spread the gospel, as I went to Mongolia, and uh, during the whole sessions of seminar, I uh, realized that we might have been uh, so uh, so lazy, and uh, I thought to myself. That what if I just spread gospel uh, very firmly, and uh, uh, I just spread gospel like uh, judgment? You know, I talk about judgment in the seminar to make them awakened, but it's not love of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus, and two minds, two thoughts that is coming that are coming into our minds and family, the restoration of the family. And uh, those teachers in the essay schools, they received this will willingly, this message. And maybe the Korean cultures and Korean people are uh, a little bit famous, <laughs> a little popular in Mongolia, maybe. Uh, but as we gave the seminar to these pastors and uh, the pastor's wives and Mongolian mission, uh, we thought that uh, they observe this message better than anyone. And they were so much craving for this message. They were th so thirsty for the true water to flow onto their minds. So uh, there were no power or time uh, for us to, uh, strength left for us to uh, do some uh, sightseeing. Uh, we actually felt sorry for ourselves a little bit. But anyway, all power is promised those who go forth in faith to proclaim the everlasting gospel. As the servants of God bear to the word a living message fresh from the throne of glory, the light of truth will shine forth as a lamb that burneth, reaching to all parts of the world. Our hope and wantings is, the one, is only the one thing. The seed of God's message will bear fruits in the minds of Mongolian mission and Mongolian SDA schools. So we have to recheck. We have to connect to them every time. We have to communicate with, with them every every time. So uh, we have our own pastor's program here, pastor's a small group here too, right? So uh, we want them to connect to those Mongolian mission pastors and wives too. And then our, our members, mission trip members, have been so much... Uh, uh, they uh, actually try their best to help out with the uh, mission trip and the seminars too. And some of them were became sick actually. And uh, the last uh, in the last day of our mission trip, they let us sleep in the ged, the traditional uh, house of Mongolia. Uh, 
And the one thing that was really bothering uh, was there, there was no uh, bathroom. There was no toilet there. So uh, my wife and I uh, slept in uh, one whole gad. But there were lack of number, lack of number of gad. So uh, we invited two more people uh, to sleep sleep in our get together and uh there were some awkward moments but anyway and uh that was one good memory that we have but uh, it was fortunate that uh, we had four different beds so it is un a really unforgettable trip and this is the picture of the first day we went to uh the very fancy restaurant there and the last day we finished our trip I was sleeping in Ger without a toilet. And especially by the help of all of you, your prayer as well as your donations too, we thank you so much for being a part of this mission trip. And I hope and wish and pray that this gospel will spread soon around the world. Thank you. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for sharing this gospel to us and letting us know and realize the truth and the way to heaven. Lord, a lot of people, people around the world now they are trying their best to make salvation on their own. But Lord, you have given us this gospel, this true gospel. So Lord, please let us spread gospel and share it with another people, just like Abraham did. Lord, Lord, May you bless us with the power, the strength, and please encourage us to share this gospel, this ex experienced gospel in our lives to our family members and neighbors. And Lord, the wars in between Ukraine and Russia, tsunami, earthquakes, and the wars that broke out just a few days ago in Israel, Lord, people against people, race against race. This is a sign of the last day that you gave us in the Bible. Lord, please, may you guide us and bless us and give us power and encourage us to spread gospel until the last day that we see Jesus Christ. Lord, especially for the church members of the Saranam Church, Lord, please bless and give them power it, and think about each and every, every one of them to share the part in this mission, Lord. Lord, as you wish, we, as you want, we also want this gospel to be spread around the world until the, until the end of the world, Lord. And we also have uh, small groups uh, to practice ourselves spreading gospel to you, Lord. Please notice us. Please make us realize every moment in our lives this gospel, Lord. And please bless each and every one of us and then each and every one of the church members and our foreign friends too, that they can share this gospel, gospel and practice, practice, have a practical knowledge to share uh, with other people. I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.